Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Brian and we're going to be doing, uh, well, Andrew kazooie today. Um, so this is going to be a solo project, um, primarily because I just kind of want to get back into doing solo projects and things like that again. Um, I haven't done them in a while and I, th I can't even remember the last one I did solo. I, I want to say it was like Spyro 2 maybe or Spyro, yeah Spyro 2. Um, so I'm not 100% certain about what actually my last uh, solo project was, but I'm going to hope that this it turns out rather well. And uh, as you can, I, I mean, it's Banjo-Kazooie. I, in all honesty, I haven't played Banjo-Kazooie before I got it on the Xbox 360, so I'm a little ashamed to say it wasn't something that was part of my childhood, but it w it's in the same vein of games that I used to play as a kid, so I was really happy to play it when I first got it, and honestly, I fell in love with it. And... It's, it, look at it, it's Banjo-Kazooie! I mean, I'm happy to play it for you guys, and, you know, Microsoft owns Rareware and stuff like that, and they own the, the rights to Banjo-Kazooie and stuff, and, I mean, they had so many other things that they could have done um, with other Rareware projects, but I mean, like, they released the Rare Replay, and that is, like, pretty much all of them, I think, actually, that they have the licensing to, like, uh, they couldn't do things like Donkey Kong, obviously, because Nintendo owns the rights to Donkey Kong and cross, you know, manufacturer, uh, you know, games like that don't necessarily work all that well. Uh, not to mention also, like, GoldenEye for the N64, they couldn't add that because the licensing for James Bond and stuff like that. But everything that is a, gr a Rareware IP is part of the Rareware, or the Rare Replay, Rare Revival, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, game pack. Um... Now, one of the reasons I particularly like this game, other than the fact that it is super colorful and it's a lot of fun to play, is Grant Kirkhope did the music for this. And I'm actually going to erase my save for that, uh, for this uh, slot. So let's go into game three. Um, but Grant Kirkhope composed the music for this, and I don't know if Grant will be watching this for whatever reason. If you are Grant, hi, thank you for watching. It means a lot to me. Um, but he made the music for this, as well as a lot of other Rareware games, and I just love the music in this game it's one of the it's one of the most underrated components of, of video games and uh, it's same, the same goes with movies as well I mean a lot of people just discount like the music or the sound effects or the foley or whatever you want to call it, whatever um, components to the sound engineering aspect of a game or movie and you know if you don't have good music or good sound effects or anything like that it just doesn't feel right like even, even the opening intro gets you pumped, ready to play the game, and, and that's what I really like about it. So, Grant, good job, and, uh, oh, speaking of, everyone, um, Grant Kirkhope is also going to be doing the music along with a couple of other people um, that worked on previous railroad projects for uh, in Playtonic Games when they make uh, Ukulele, which is a crowdfunded game that is in the same vein as this, that's coming out next year, I believe. Um, I am a backer of Ukulele. I really, really wanted it to become a thing, so I was like, oh yeah, sure, let's toss in, you know, $100, $150, whatever it was. And, um, you know, I, I, I really want it to be really cool and really good, and I'm, I I have really good faith in them to, to make it, because they're all, most of them, excuse me, are ex-Rareware employees. So, you know, th this is the type of game that they'd be making. A lot more polished and a lot more, you know, graphically, you know, have a higher graphic, uh, excuse me, graphical fidelity, but you know, it's still going to be a platformer that we want, that I've wanted anyway for years. And I apparently, based on how much money they raised with um, their crowdfunding, a lot of other people want to want it too. Um, so, basic story for this game: if you guys have been reading along instead of listening to me talk, uh, basically, uh, Gruntilda the Ugly Witch is not too pleased with 2D being the fairest in the land, similar to a. Uh, you know, Snow White kind of story, kind of, like, aspect to this, to this plot. Um, now we have Banjo here and his buddy Kazooie, uh, the bird in the backpack, who's actually the backpack, you, it doesn't have a back if you, like, look in, it, 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 old school Nintendo games, which now is, uh, Xbox game, um, like, old school games like this where they only had a limited amount of things to work with, they couldn't really put, like, sides on everything, especially parts you don't see. So it's, if you want to think of it similarly to, like, sitcom uh, stages and things like that, that's kind of what they did. They only built what you want, what they wanted you to see. Everything else was kind of just open and not really there. So, um, 
Yeah, uh, Gruntilda is in the process of kidnapping Tootie. So, pfft. Sure, we start off with a kidnapping. Or bear, uh, napping. Well, Banjo is a bear and he's napping, so that really doesn't work, does it? Actually, maybe it does. A bear napping. A double bear napping. Double, un double meaning for that phrase, I suppose. Um, but yeah, everything looks so much crisper in the Xbox 360 version. They fixed a couple of bugs. Um, I think if I remember right, there are a few bugs that are still in place. But that's just how it's going to be, I guess. I mean, I, it, it happens. And I have to say, those curtains kind of remind me of either A, a DNA test with the colorful spots and stuff, or B, the, uh... Come on. Oh, I can't double jump yet? I have to talk to goggles, or bottles, excuse me. Um, or it's a, uh, uh, what was the other thing I was thinking it looked like? I don't remember. Uh, it was, it looks like a DNA test, at least. <laughs> so, let's go! Come on, bo bottles, let's, let's go. Come on. I can speed up the text, I suppose. Um, but we gotta let the plot kind of play out, and I kind of don't want to really skip the text, because they actually made it very interesting where each of the characters has their own little voice but they don't speak if you know what I mean they have like this noise kind of but it's specific to each character so certain characters are, are very similar sounding to others and that will come into play at the very end of the game but for now we don't have to worry about it too much um, thankfully though you know I have this game um, Actually, <laughs> funny story. I bought this game on the Xbox 360 when it when I you know got an up to um, you know when I got a relatively newer Xbox 360. No, I don't want to get training, please. Uh, I know how to play the game. Um, and I bought the, I bought the Banjo Kazooie uh, re-release on the Xbox 360. And I was reading. Oh well, if you get an Xbox One, you're automatically going to get Banjo Kazooie on the Xbox One when it's singly singularly coming out on. Uh, in September, which is well past September at this point of the video, but, um, you know, we, uh, I, I ended up getting the Rare Replay just because I wanted all the other Rare games like Conquer and stuff, so, yay! Um, so now this is a honeycomb. Uh, we defeated our, the giant, like, living carrot for a piece of honey. Now the honey in this game is our health, and, mmm, I'm sticky, tasty honey energy. And that's all it says. It doesn't explain to you that's your health meter or anything like that. I guess bottles would explain it, but, you know, hey, we got vegetables flying. We got a freaking cauliflower that is flying. Now, this dropped a honeycomb piece, but it doesn't have anything filled in it. Now, what does this mean, you might wonder? Now, this, there are, you, this is a honeycomb honeycomb piece. And he has a buzzy buzzy sound. Now... As he's saying, collect six of them to increase the energy bar. Now, each level normally will have, at most, two. Uh, Spiral Mountain, which the mu- uh, Spiral Mountain, I said that a little weird the first time. Uh, but Spiral Mountain will have six, so you'll be able to increase your health immediately, right off the bat. So we got, you know, enemies that are just giant vegetables, and it's a little disconcerting, but hey, whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll just run with it. Um... Everything is pretty much alive in this game. It's a very colorful, very living world. And, you know, you're going to go to a lot of different locales. We're going to go to a beach, and we're going to go to a graveyard, haunted house area, a lot of places. If you've never played this game, I'm not going to spoil too much, but, you know, it's a barren bird. What's there to say? We're running, we have a backpack, we have yellow shorts. Can't really, can't really, you know, make that up, as you can, as you can see. So... One of the things I really like about this game is also along, uh, now that we're underwater and we can swim, we have two speeds of swimming. We have the fast swim, which is a little bit less accurate and harder to control, but faster. Or we have the paddle, which is a little bit slower, but more uh, controlling. Um, so one of the things I like about the music in this game, other than the fact that Grant Kirko, you know, composed it and did very well with it, is also the... Um, the way it transitions between different styles of the music, depending on what area of the level you're in, or whether you're in water, or when we get to the hub world, we, it will uh, it will sound different. Oh, whoops, missed. So now that we got six of the uh, empty honeycomb pieces, we have an extra hit point, which I can I show? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so we originally started with five. Now we have six, and I'm gonna explain all the little icons on the right as we get them. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now, but 
Uh, for now, we're just going to get our first extra life as well, because this is this is back in an era where extra lives were a thing. Um, you collect, uh, they're, they're basically just little banjos that are doing like the flex, uh, the muscle head flex kind of thing. And, you know, it's like, look, look out for me. I'm an extra life. So we start out with how many lives again? Uh, we started out with three. So we get now an extra one. Now we have four. Uh, simple math. It's very important, everyone. Um, so ignoring the fact that we have another flying cauliflower, but that one's just going to give us more energy if we got hit or anything like that. Actually, no, let's do that. Let's get hit. So, yeah, we get hit. We lose some health. And if you notice, we have Banjo and Kazooie on the on the upper left-hand corner there. As you get hit, they slowly get a little bit more upset and, like, tired, I suppose, would be a good way to describe it. Come on. Oh, he's flying too high. The cauliflower went too high for me. Um, so, you know, if you get hit and you're almost dying, like, I am two spaces away from being killed, your health won't, like, disappear off the screen just so it know, you know you're almost dead, but we're pretty we're one hit away from being killed at this point. So, Banjo and Kazooie are looking a little beat up at this point, um, but thankfully, they decide that, uh, instead of showing, hey, you need, you know, more health and doing the, you know, the Zelda beep, they're gonna, you know, basically just do one of those, hey, here's your health, all the time. Now, um, that's good for a lot of reasons other than the fact that, you know, it's just not as annoying to hear a beep 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 and you know I, I really appreciate that so good on you rare good on you now uh let's see if we can get another piece of health because i don't want there we go so banjo and banjo has a couple of different attacks he has a standard standing walking hit like he just does the three left right left kind of hit and that's if you're standing still or moving very slowly if you're running and you hit the attack button you'll do a somersault kind of attack kind of useful you kind of get stuck though at the very end of it but um the most useful attack is the jump and attack where kazooie will just use her beak and uh and yes kazooie is a girl um and kazooie will just use her beak and just peck at whoever's in front of you now we have a couple of other uh, abilities like the uh, the beak uh charge I, i'm gonna call it i forget what they actually call it but you hold the, the right trigger left trigger and just do the Hit the attack button and it'll do a little bit more powerful. You'll need it for certain puzzles. Uh, also with the triggers, trigger A is to jump really high. Little con it, the control it's it controls a little weird at times. So be wary if you have you know if you have any momentum, it's going to take you in that direction regardless. Um, other than that, we don't have any real other abilities yet. So we're just going to talk to bottles and you know progress the story. And once we get into Gruntilda's Lair, we're, I'm going to end the episode, we're going to get our first Jiggy, and we're going to show you how to get into um, a f our first actual level um, before we end off. So, um, you know, it's a lot of fun so far. I, I really like this part, uh, this game, and it it's very colorful. And this is what I was talking about, the, the music just changes. It's on the bridge, off the bridge, you're fine. It's all happy-go-lucky, but once you get on the bridge... It's, it gets a little bit more dark, but I love the, the music for Gruntilda's Lair. Um, if I had to rank the music in this game uh, from my favorite to my least favorite, at least the first top, the top three songs that I can think of off the top of my head, um, in no particular order, because they're all pretty much equal in my mind, uh, we have Spiral Mountain, Gruntilda's Lair, and Freezy's Peak. Those three are my favorite tracks in this entire game. Um, couple reasons. First, we have, you know, Freeze Easy Peak, which one, that's not going to be for a while. That's a later level in the game. Um, but it's very, it's not aggressive, but it's very fast-paced and gets you really, it's really exciting music. Um, and it, it complements the level scheme very well, and I'll explain how it does that when we get to that level, but, um, for, like, Gruntilda's Lair, you hear a lot. So, just hearing the music a ton really makes it grow on you. Uh, and Spiral Mountain, you know, it's the first music you hear in the game, so... You know, you just gotta grow attached to it, so... Those are my three favorites. Now, this is a Jiggy. Jiggies are very important. There are a hundred of them in the game. Um, and we need them to uh, unlock levels. Now, each level, uh, we're gonna get... There's ten Jiggies per level, including Gruntilda's Lair. 
Um, so we're going to use the Jiggies to open up our first puzzle, uh, which will unlock the first level. Now, unlike this one here, which is our first level, which is called Mumbo's Mountain, um, uh, the first one, we only need the first puzzle piece. Now, the picture frame here is right next to where the level opens. This is not, this is never the case other than this one. So, just so you guys are aware. Um, now, the one thing I also want to point out with more music, and it, it, this it's more prevalent in Gruntilda's Lair, is if we're in this, like, this neutral area, we just have a generic, I'm going to call it generic, we're going to have the original, excuse me, more, more, you know, the verbiage is better with that, the original pure Gruntilda's Lair theme. But if we go over into this area, Oh, come on, b bottles, go away. I don't want you to be talking. I want them to listen to the music. It's a, it, it has a different style. Although it's the same melody, it uses different instruments and things like that. It, it, it feels a lot better, and it's a big it's a good transition. And um, I, I, there's a video on how this actually occurs. I'm going to link it in the description as well as on the screen. And if you guys want, if you are interested in how the music is actually transitioned, you can learn about how that happens. It's basically through MIDI channels, but I'm not very good at explaining it. So go watch that video if you're really interested in how the music transitions like this. Um, so we got our first puzzle piece, and there's one puzzle piece that's missing, conveniently. So we're just gonna use the one puzzle piece to unlock our very first level. Now what's interesting is the everything like got really like HD tech, like uh, revamped, like textures and characters and text. Certain things like the actual pictures did not, I don't know exactly why that may be. It might just be a programming limitation or something like that with the, the revamp. But, um, hey, everything else looks fantastic, so I'm not really complaining about it. So we can just hit the A button to fill it in, and there we go. The puzzle is complete, and now we unlock the first level, which is Mumbo's Mountain. So we're going to be doing Mumbo's Mountain in the next episode. And uh, in the, after that, uh, actually, I'm pretty. I'm going to try to do one level per video. It's going to make this a very short project if I do. Um, so I might break it up between like you know every five Gs. That'll give me twenty episodes to work with, plus any superfluous extras uh, that I want to do. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to see, if you guys want, oh, and if you have, they have really fun idle animations. So. Uh, if you guys want to see more, please give this a like. I'm not going to make the second episode until I get a gauge of how you guys are receiving this. Um, only because I want to make sure I'm making the best things for you. If you have any feedback, please, please leave feedback. Um, that's definitely going to help me grow um, and help me you know, improve this project. And also my, my own commentary and, and styling and things like that. So uh, please leave the feedback. A like is always appreciated. Comments are even more appreciated because that will tell me what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right, what, what you want to see more of. If you have any ideas for things to discuss or point out in at future episodes, please do so. I've played the game. I'm not going to be bothered by spoilers, but try not to spoil too much if someone hasn't played the game. Um, other than that, we do have a Patreon, you know, the standard fare. Patreon, Twitter, if you want to donate to us and support us, that's always appreciated as well. Links for that are down below. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next episode with Mumbo's Mountain. See ya! Hey.